Gentlemen, welcome back to Flavor Country. We done let the smoke out of this butt good. And, uh, yeah, some thick, heady, 70s style, <laughs> bushy, thick smoke. Oh, it's pouring out the back end now, too. However, it is not without its pleasantness, actually. It's, it, the insulation back then was made from shellac, so which was the, basically the first plastic. It's actually a secretion from an insect in uh, Southeast Asia. They used to make records out of it and, and all sorts of stuff before they actually invented plastic. So it's essentially an organic plastic, and you can smell that when it burns. It, it doesn't smell unpleasant. It's, it's kind of, well, it's, it's not pleasant, but it's not unpleasant, put it that way. We're going to take this apart and see, one, what the hell happened, <laughs> me, me happened, and two, if we can fix it. If and I were sitting on a chair, I just about would have fell off of her on account of, well, we've taken apart so many modern tools and the electronics are invariably fried right out of her. As soon as you get a little heat in there, pop goes the weasel. <laughs> That's a game I like to play, never mind. But, as we can see, this thing is still intact. There's no shit stains on any of the solid state components. This rectifying bridge here, still intact. This diac, triac, or uh, silicone, <laughs> silicone controlled rectifier, SCR, is still intact. Guys were saying that these capacitors, they figured this capacitor had blown, but check it out, still completely intact. And also, guys were saying that I'm full of shit, that these are not brushed on. They're actually dipped. The, the colors are actually dipped. You have a look at that. How in the F are you going to dip those colors on? There's yellow on top of black on top of brown. Listen, you can see beautiful hand finish where the brush marks are thinner and thicker in some areas. Brushed on. No doot about it. Oh, there's the brush. We can see on that right hand side there are some burn marks and glazing on the other side. So that got fried and look at look at the wear pattern. So that's cocked over in the brush holder. That's not real good. The other one's not as bad, but still has that same burn mark on it, right? Where it must have just where it stalled out on the com yeah, you see that one even better. Where it stalled out on the commutator and just would have been arcing and sparking away. And we see the preformulation is positively dripping with residual Lucas oil smoke. I might, I mightn't collect that. It's tough for us colonial types to find Lucas oil smoke nowadays. But yeah, oh, just smells like smells like the Marlboro Cowboys jacket. Mmm. Not to worry. It's only carcinogenic in California. Still magnetize these ceramic um, iron ceramic. Magnets are still magnetized and you wouldn't actually want I said in the previous video neodymium, but you wouldn't actually want neodymium magnets on there on account of heat You want the uh, samarium cobalt if and you did want to uh, increase the chooch factor considerably you change those for samarium cobalt now here oh Yeah Bearing still seems good both bearings, but this is cooked and guys were crying, gnashing their teeth. Why would I destroy a perfectly good vintage Dremel? If and you knew anything about anything, you would have seen that, one, I showed that there was cracks in here in the lacquer. So it was already pre-dickered before I got my dirty old dick beaters on there. And by the blackening and flaking, you know that something nasty is going to happen. Like, it, it just ain't no good. It's not long for this life if you see something like that. So, if you catch it, you might be able to re-dip it and so forth. And, of course, you could rewind this, but cost-benefit. I'm going to see if we can just very quickly, post-acopalyptic, you know, style, just very quickly... See if we can get this to half-ass chooch, maybe quarter-ass chooch. Whilst we're on the subject of troubleshooting slash failure analysis, if it looks like shit, smells like shit, and tastes like shit, it's probably shit. So, we look at the commutation bars here, and one, 
right black and burned right out of her. So we know that that guy is probably going to be the problem. But we'll get the meter out and check to see which ones are shorted. And then we'll pull a little trick out of my ass here. On days bygone, there would have been places, motor rewind shops, all over, every little town would have a motor rewind shop that would do alternators for your car and starters. Of course, now starters and alternators are throwaway items. You bring it back to the wholesaler, they give you your $30 core charge, and you get a new one. You stick it in there for 100 bucks. It's not worth rebuilding. Nobody can make a living at it. But in those days, they used to have a device called a growler, which was essentially a bunch of laminations and it would just pulse a magnetic field and it would make this thing vibrate it would induce it would induce a voltage in the coils so you could see if any coils were bad or weak or so forth now we don't have that but what we're going to do is we are going to follow the path that the electricity goes through when it's chooching in here and that is through the commutation bars they are diametrically opposed. So we just go around and check. So that's 13 ohms. And we'll go over here and check this next one, diametrically opposed. And that's open circuit. 200 and something kilo ohms. So we know that one's bad. And we'll keep working our way around. Four point, so we're all over the map here. 4 ohms, 10 ohms. What's it supposed to be? I would say it's probably supposed to be like 12. Yeah, so that we know that that, that winding is good. Nothing wrong with it. So we're going to go around and look for the open circuits and the short circuits. And if it's below, say, 8 ohms, we'll just snip the wire off that commutation bar. Hopefully we're left with enough windings in order to get this thing to actually rotate. No surprise, the burnt bar marked here in red, open circuit, kilo ohms, 200 kilo ohms. Here we have 4 ohms across this pair, 11, 12, 11, 12, 4 ohms, and 4 ohms. If I cut the wire on these low resistance coils, I'm only left with, this is 16 bar commutator, I'm only left with 4 working coils. So I don't think I'm going to do that. Very act, check! Thermal imaging camera, check. Taking a vice, check. Contact. Nothing happening. 30 volts. 50 volts. That's a 6,000 count meter. Oh, Jesus Christ. Excuse me, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go change me drawers. Just gonna give her a wee tweak. And also, I grab my uh, fine adjustment tool for recalcitrant pixies. Oh, she's trying. Oh, looks like we got the best part of that. Just a wee whiff of Lucas Oil smoke. That's all she left. She she chooched her last in the previous video there. Ran like it was coal fired. Thanks for watching. Ain't no fixing this, partner. Keep your dick in a voice.